news dump. Uh, thank you to my fellow commissioners for being here. I'm not sure if you're here to support me or to watch me fall on my face. Actually, I am sure, but I'm glad you're here anyway. Thank you, thank you Maureen Olhausen of the Federal Trade Commission. Starting next week, Maureen has agreed to tell the jokes for me. <laughs> thank you to Senator Cruz for letting David Rettel join us. <laughs> Power of positive thinking. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> A thank you to AT&T for not transferring any licenses as part of the Time Warner deal. <laughs> and finally, thank you to tonight's main sponsor, Sinclair Broadcasting. <laughs> In a Chairman's Dinner First, uh, tonight's program will feature some must-run content. <laughs>
difference a year makes, though. I mean, no doubt the vibe at the uh, Commission has changed a lot over the last 12 months, but one thing hasn't changed, and that is that Commissioner O'Reilly remains a strong ally of mine, just as he's been for the last four years. And having said that, the dynamics of our relationship have experienced a recent shift. <laughs> Now, people ask me 
hey, well, what keeps you up at night? And that's actually pretty easy. The thought of the FCC having to resolve a retransmission dispute between Verizon and Sinclair. <laughs> I mean, how do you choose between your longtime love and your newfound crush? <laughs> may know, I've made Closing the Digital Divide my top priority. To raise awareness, I have hit more than 20 states and have logged more than 4,000 miles in rental cars on this Digital Divide tour. Wow. <laughs> uh, love the pity claps. Now, I just wish Tom Price had told me that private jets were an option. <laughs> We're also modernizing our media ownership rules, which reminds me, here's Sinclair again with their nod to diversity. <laughs> I was taught about the great American melting pot when I was young, that it's a mix of various races, cultures, and ethnicities that make up Americans. I still believe in the melting pot. Others demand some notion of racial or cultural purity, a position I find bigoted. And the opinion that only black people can legitimately have an afro, someone should tell that to American Folk Center, or it's our fault. I just gotta bring character for a second. That is funny. That is funny. <laughs> Notwithstanding that bizarre video that we just witnessed. Man, Garfield. All right. Um, I do think the Democrats' obsession with Sinclair has gotten a little bit unhealthy. Although I kind of get it. If Sinclair and Tribune merged, the combined average viewership of the nightly newscasts would be 2.2 million viewers. 2.2 million. That is six tenths of one percent. The whole country. <laughs> MSNBC hears that and wonders, what's their secret? <laughs> Our media modernization initiative is part of a broader effort to review and either delete or modify outdated rules. And as part of this review, we found some pretty bizarre rules that were tucked into the Code of Federal Regulations. Uh, there was one head scratcher adopted by the Martin Commission that simply said, the cable industry can kiss our ass. <laughs> uh, others include, uh, no decent restaurant shall be located within two miles of the FCC's headquarters. <laughs>
we also approved a new standard for next generation broadcast TV. Finally. <laughs> finally, finally, America will get what it wants, which is to enjoy Gordon Smith in Ultra HD. <laughs> Personally, I think my favorite highlight of 2016, 2017 rather, at the commission was uh, Nick Gattegani's six-week stint as general counsel. Uh, <laughs> the uh, OGC table, obviously. Uh, the Washington Post said a comet hasn't shined this brightly before flaming out since Anthony Scaramucci. <laughs> Now, next stint at OGC may be over, but we will always have the memories.
Well, Chip Pickering is joining the resistance. <laughs> Justin Timberlake was recently announced as the halftime act for the Super Bowl. Michael Powell is planning to enjoy every minute of this one. <laughs> inclusion. Uh, I mean, inclusion. <laughs> Sorry. According to okay. uh, Many people are still shell shocked that I'm up here tonight. Uh, they ask themselves, how on earth did this happen? Well, uh, moments before tonight's dinner, Somebody leaked a 14-year-old video that helps answer that question. And in all candor, I can no longer hide from the truth. And so I might as well own it. But uh, let's take a look. Yeah, and the cover charge is 20 bucks as long as we get it by 2 a.m. It should be really fun. Oh, Hey! Hey, Jeez! Uh, Mom, went to a three doors down concert at the MCI Center last night. It was fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't buy MCI for another three years. Oh, okay. What's up? So I have to talk to you guys. Uh, okay. As you know, the FCC is captured by industry, but we think it's not captured enough. So we have a plan. A plan, so we have a mind. We want to brainwash and groom a Verizon puppet to install the FCC. <laughs>
And I have uh, with the title of this event, to be honest with you, the FCBA Chairman's Dinner, given that the real work is done by, and hence the credit deserved by, our wonderful professional staff. You know how busy we have been during this extraordinary year, and we couldn't have done it without them. But what you may not know fully is their true dedication to helping the American people. <laughs> with your indulgence, here's just a quick story. In mid-October, I got an email from an elderly man in Alabama. His wife died this past January, and his prized possession was her voice. Specifically, her voicemails, which he saved on his phone. But he told me that his phone carrier was migrating, as he put it, his service on November 6th. And once that happened, those voicemails would be wiped out. Desperate, he, he begged me, please help me get her voice back. I was skeptical that we'd be able to do anything, but I shared that message internally to see if we could do something. And I wasn't sure what happened until a few weeks later. I got an email in which our staff said, with characteristic understatement, we wanted to let you know that the issue appears to have been resolved. The consumer recently followed up with us to express his appreciation. In other words, because our staff, in this case from the Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau, cared and took the time to help, a sad widower got his wife's voicemails back. He emailed me again yesterday, as it turns out, and as he put it, I'll quote, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely appreciate the effort of the CGB staff in helping me get her, the voicemails back. My wife Renee was simply darling, and I miss her terribly. I was at a low point and felt I could not count on even a government agency to help me. You proved me wrong. And I thank you sincerely. This is what our staff across the agency does every day. They work hard, they care, and they get results. Even in, perhaps especially in, those cases where public attention may never be drawn to the issue. This is why I love this agency. This is why I'm so proud to call them my co-workers. Could those of you who work in the FCC please stand and be recognized for your public service.